thank you all so much for joining us. We're really happy to have you here. You four have done collectively countless shows with Irish Rep and are really mainstays behind the scenes. And so we're really glad to have you all here today. And we miss having you in our theater. My name is April Klein. I have been working with Irish Rep as a stage manager, both ASMing and PSMing since around 2007. Some of the most recent uh, credits include uh, PSM on London Assurance, which was a wonderfully funny show, the you O'Casey know, Trilogy, and I'm actually uh, right now hoping to continue stage managing A Touch of a Poet, uh, <laughs> Irish Rep, when, when the world calms down again. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Michael Palmer, uh, production stage manager. The last show I did at the, at the rep was Pump Girl, or I should say The Smuggler, which we were in pre-production and when all of this came crashing down. Other shows I did at the rep is Trist, St. Nicholas, The Dead, uh, My Scandalous Life. I do a lot of the shows down in, in, the, um, in the studio. That's me. My name's Jeff DeVault. I started working in Irish rep in 2013 on The Weir. Uh, most recently I did uh, Lady G, which was running when uh, the theater was shut down in the studio. And uh, before that, uh, on the main stage, Seafair and uh, Dublin Carol. Also, uh, I'm supposed to be doing, coming up again, uh, the revival of Yes. So we'll see what happens. My name is Pam Brzozowski. I started stage managing at Irish Rep in 2003 and have done more than 40 shows at Irish Rep, including 10 of the galas. Other shows, The Emperor Jones, both versions of Finian's Rainbow, a bunch of Brian Friels, which are my favorites, and a bunch of the galas for the past 10 years. So could one of you uh, walk me through a stage manager's role in a production from start to finish? We get hired for what is a period called pre-production. Then we start coordinating uh, the mountains of paperwork that it, it hmm. takes to uh, put a show together. I'm not going to go through all the paperwork because that would, that would, no one would ever become a stage manager again if I divulge to all the paperwork. We run all the rehearsals, we schedule uh, and run the tech rehearsals and the dress rehearsals. We supervise all the pre-show checks with the ASM before we start every show. We interface with the house manager uh, about when to open the house and when to actually start the show. There's many different things that the PSM can do during the show. One involves uh, calling a show, which is verbally calling the lighting and sound cues and video cues and deck cues and, and actors entrance and exits to technicians who then execute those things. In uh, smaller venues uh, where there's not either enough room or the budget for all of the extra people that are actually running the boards, you run them yourself, uh, in which case you are running, it's called pushing the button. I'll add too that the other thing that we do is that partly we're a bit of an archivist of the show because we do create a book that um, becomes like a Bible for the show and you have your staging script and your calling script in there, but then you all ha also have any records of uh, any paperwork that you, you feel is important to put in there, copies of calendars and uh, sketches and ground plans and things like that. All of that goes in the book and the idea that uh, if they wanted to do that show again, particularly in that version, they have a whole reference point to go from to put the show back up again. A lot of times it's the stage manager's job to maintain the director's vision. Mm -hmm. So what that means is watching the show every night while you're calling the cues, or running the boards, mm -hmm. taking any notes for actors, for tech, for crew, and then giving those notes to the appropriate people so that the show stays the same every night and it doesn't start to um, expand, get longer, get shorter. People don't add things, change things. So that really falls to us as well, unless there's an associate director or somebody coming in to look at it. Yeah, along those lines as well, if something happens, someone gets hurt, someone gets sick, maybe in an instance where they're hurt, they can still go on, but they can't do an activity that they normally could before. 
Um, sometimes you end up on the fly doing a little bit of adjustment beforehand saying, okay, well, you, you won't do this activity tonight, you know, or at least until you feel better. And then figuring out how that's going to affect the other things, because there's always a ripple effect to it. So how did you, how did you decide that stage management was the right path for you? I'd love to really hear a little bit from each of you about that. I actually went to college as a writing major and a theater minor. And on my sophomore year, one of the professors that was directing a show asked me to stage manage one. He said, I think you'd be good at it. And I, I did it. And I just got hooked on it. I started to get into some tech stuff in college. And when I graduated, I didn't know how to put together a resume. So I just sort of put every single thing I'd ever done on a giant resume. And I sent it to a summer stock. They actually called and said, we want to interview you to be the children's theater stage manager. So I interviewed and I got the job and I went and sort of learned about stage management there. And it took off from there. I went into college as a music major, a piano major, and I knew I wanted also to get into theater. So I started, I double majored and, and learned theater and all, but was an actor. I continued my acting career and then I was cast in a show and the stage manager dropped out and I said, I'll do it until, until to get somebody. And they never got somebody and <laughs> the rest is history. You know, I've been, I've been going on since then because it's something I really fit into and like. I was a... Uh acting professionally before I went to college. And then uh, in college, I was pre-med, but I was still acting professionally. As my career grew in Kansas City, I became a director. And then I needed a, I needed a stage manager once, so I, I hired another director friend of mine to stage manage for me. And then I had to return the favor for him. So that's kind of how I got into it. What do you think are the essential qualities to a successful stage manager? What do you need to be personality-wise in order to, to succeed in that line of work or enjoy that line of work? You have to care. You do have to care and you have to care about people and how they're feeling, but you also have to give the hard truth sometimes. You know, it's that, that kind of thing. You do need to be, have an organized mind, um, but you really need to have a sense of humor. And you have to be, and you have to be able to, to put your, your needs and your ego in the background. And you, you have to be able <laughs> to keep a secret. <laughs> you also have to have, have the ability to make quick judgments, have good judgment. You have to be like the grounded person in the process. Do, do any of you have a mentor, somebody who helped you to get involved or to become who you are in your career now? And if so, can you tell a little bit about them? I've worked with many people that I have learned a lot from, particularly in the beginning. So those, I would say I have many mentors. These three stage managers are people that I, I watch and, and look up to because they're, they're really at the top of the field. One thing that I find helpful is we have a group, a bunch of Irish rep stage managers like Jeff and Michael and April, a couple others that when something comes up on a show, I we have like a group email that we'll send out and say, here's the situation. What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's very confidential. And I've gotten some great help and feedback from some of the stage managers that we work with at Irish Rep. And I do consider them sort of mentors in a community um, and a support system. And then just in terms of my leadership style, I think I learned a lot from both Charlotte and Kieran that I think they are great leaders. They run this company in such a beautiful way where they make everybody feel very appreciated, very supported. Um, when you walk in the door, you feel like you're a member of the family. They, they always say thank you and they tell you how much they appreciate your work. I think I've based a lot of how I interact with people in this job off of what I've learned from Charlotte and Kieran. I'd love to hear a little bit about how you all got started with Irish Rep. Uh, I had been doing an off-Broadway show at another theater company uh, where Charlie Cor Corcoran was working also as a set designer. And then uh, I think they couldn't find a stage manager to do the Weir in 2013. And Charlie shoved my name uh, in front of Kieran's uh, nose. And then Kieran and I talked one day and that's kind of where it started for me was, was with the Weir. I um, <clears throat> did a show at, at another company and one of the producers there was, was going to be an actor in a one-man show at the Irish Rep. 
and uh, he asked me to come over and and um, stage manage at St. Nicholas. I was brought in actually as a sub for an assistant stage manager. They were doing Meet Me in St. Louis. And the ASM, her sister was due, she was pregnant, she was due soon. So they were gonna train me so that she could go to Long Island for the birth. So they brought me in to train for that. Unfortunately, in the middle of my first day of training, her sister went into labor. <laughs> she couldn't be there for the birth, but she was able to go after. But that was my first experience at Irish Rep. I was hired in 2002, actually, by Kieran to run sound for a show that I cannot pronounce. And I did it for a short time and then left to go stage manage another show. And then about a year later, maybe a little less, he called me to do The Love Hungry Farmer and have been there for a long time. <laughs> you get in and you never get out. <laughs> I know, but I, you know, I love it. And I feel like it's an artistic home and it's a family and I'm very appreciative to have that community. Yes. Hard to find. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. You've, you've each done so many different shows over your careers. And I was wondering, was there one that was particularly challenging and, and why? I think shows can be challenging for a positive or a negative reason. But one that was very challenging for a positive reason was actually at Irish Rep. It was the Emperor Jones. And it was challenging because it was so detailed. Uh, and our leading man, John Douglas Thompson, was so such an interesting actor because he's completely in the moment every performance but he's also the most specific actor I've ever worked with and the most consistent actor I've ever worked with and he was so specific that he and I had to sort of get in sync with every movement every breath almost so that my cues came exactly when he needed them and that was it was challenging but it was super exciting to figure that out and to get to a point where he and I were just completely together every performance. I agree with Pam. It's like shows are challenging for different reasons. And when I thought about it, it was actually kind of hard to pick out some. One was for a good challenge and was also actually at Irish Rep when we did the OKC trilogy last year. And that was a good challenge just because the overall scope of the show and the size of the project and what actually went into making something that has three parts work together when you're working with all these different people and a whole other stage management team. And that, I really enjoyed that project for the challenge that it presented. Mine was um, that first show, the Trist over, over at Irish Rep, you know, where the first pages, whatever, was a little crazy running. I, I, was, I was used to call and not actually doing it. So I'm actually, I'm frankly a little surprised that the dead didn't rank up there for Michael or Jeff. You were both stage managers for the dead and I would expect an immersive experience to be a particular challenge. The strange thing or the the difficult part is, is what you mentioned. It's it, you're calling a show and also you're inside the show. It's very strange and you're you're walking along with a little box behind your back pushing go buttons for you know the sure. cues uh, while you're talking to somebody in the audience or an actor, you know, was standing there talking to you while the scene's going on in the other part of the room and you have to keep track of watching that while you're dealing with them and continuing to push go. That was the most interesting part of it and also the most difficult part of it. It's an experience I will never ever forget. What is the wildest, most interesting thing you've ever had to write in a show report? During Seafair for Irish Rep, my ASM got on the headset and she said, did you leave your cell phone backstage here? And I said, well, no. She said, there's a cell phone under my chair charging. And I said, well, that's odd. After the show, a woman from the audience walked backstage and asked for her phone back. You know, I, I gently told her, you know, that that was not appropriate for her to be backstage and that there's a lot of dangerous things back there. And, you know, her phone could have easily exploded. <laughs> and I said, and here's your phone, and by the way, it's not charged. The only one that kept coming to my mind was actually also an Irish rep show, and I did a show in the studio called The Pigeon and the Taj Mahal. And <laughs> <laughs> I think we know and this story. The show had a sex doll in it, and we went through so many sex dolls. My reports, always a note about our disappointment in the sex industry, because these dolls just did not 
last. So that was probably the most interesting subject matter that, that pops into my mind first when I'm thinking about this question. I used to have fun with my, my um, the dead reports. We had a snow effect at the end that the first year we actually had uh, a machine outside that was, was, was um, making snow and, and, and it was really windy so it never worked right. <laughs> So I would constantly give notes about, you know, snow work tonight up, oh, snow was clogging, you know, the snow went out the other window, nobody saw it, you know. Um, so it was a, a snow report. It was like a weather report every, every night. Um, but when it worked, it was absolutely magical. We did the master builder at Irish Rep. <laughs> and there was an incident with a cell phone that rang and an actor took it from the audience member's hand and turned up stage and threw it against the wall and it shattered everywhere. That was quite a show report to have to give. I, I think in, in theater there are a lot of like superstitions and there are a lot of traditions. Are there any, do you have any favorite backstage traditions at Irish Trap or otherwise? After um, one of our last dress rehearsals, when Carol is in to take all of the pictures, Everybody who's involved in the production, everybody, staff, actors, directors, designers, gets on stage and she takes a group picture and then we all sing a song that they've been singing for 30 years. Um, but what happens with that picture, I think, is really special as well. It gets turned into uh, a card with the picture on the front and it's given on opening night and Kieran and Charlotte, at least one, if not both, always write a personal note to every single person in the company. It's always sort of an exciting moment on opening night to go down into the green room and find your envelope and see what the picture looks like, read the note. Um, so that's a great tradition. I wanted to know, what is, do you have a, a favorite show that you've ever worked on and, and why? It's hard to say uh, your favorite because I have so many different experiences, you know, and each show has its own special thing. It's even hard at Irish Rep to, if I narrow it down to my Irish Rep shows, you know, it's even hard to do a favorite show out of those because, you know, each one of those is special in its own way. I agree. I think for me, it's not so much about the actual show as the experience of who you're working with and the people, you know, the people you're working with, how they got along as a group, the things that happen backstage or in the green room, sort of the traditions within the company, that's what I remember more than I actually remember what happened on stage. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. You get very friendly with the people you're with, you know, and, and, and those bonds, I mean, they last forever. I mean, you, you, you may not see somebody for 10 years, and you end up doing a show with them again, and you're right back to where you were. You, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's uh, so those, those are the special things about, about the shows. Well, thank you all so much for joining. I think that wraps up our recording, and I'm just, this is so fun to see you all, and I hope we can all be together again in person soon.